Hey everybody, thank you for joining Pinecone and Fleek today. We'll be talking about optimizing query quality. Uh, with me on the, the call today are my partners from Fleek. Uh, Bo, could you advance? Hello. No, uh, hey guys. Okay. Huh? Advance the slide. Sorry? Advance oh, the slide. Oh. Okay, thank sorry. You. <laughs> so uh, my name is Corey Waddingham. Um, I'm staff partner engineer here at Pinecone. Uh, but really, it's going to be the uh, Bole and Yuchin Jin. They'll be the primary presenters today. So I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, Bo? Hello, guys. Uh, I'm Bole, and uh, I'm the co founder and the CTO of Fleek. Okay, Yichen. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Yichen. I'm the CEO and co founder of Fleek. All right, Bo, take it away. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> Okay, first I'm going to give a quick, uh, really quick and uh, brief intro about uh, what is rerank. Um, let's start with uh, how vector database works. Uh, you get a document. Um, uh, we all know that vector database uh, uh, stores the vectors. You get a document, you convert it uh, using some embedding model into vectors and store those vectors into a vector databases like a painful. Now you have a query you follow the same uh, uh, process, convert your query into a vector, and then issue this query vector to vector database. And uh, then Python will run this uh, vector similarity algorithms to return you the most uh, similar vectors uh, to your query vector as the search result. But uh, one thing to note is that um, vector database search may not always return you good results. And uh, in this process, you convert documents into vectors, and uh, you calculate vector similarities uh, just uh, by comparing those vectors. And uh, in this process, there's a, a vector loss when you convert the document. Uh, there's an information loss when you convert the document into vectors. That means vector similarity doesn't always uh, indicate a, sem a document semantic relevance, and uh, it may give you um, suboptimal re uh, query results. Uh, here's an example. Like say you have a bunch of documents about uh, uh, the company Apple and uh, uh, the Apple as a fruit, all those uh, documents, and then you ingest them all into your vector database. And now you issue a query say, oh, I want to find some information about uh, the company Apple. And uh, then the query uh, then the vector database may return you a bunch of results, which are actually the apple fruit nutri nutrition facts. That's the suboptimal score result I'm talking about. Um, on the other hand, there are a set of algorithms that are able to directly compare the similarity between two documents without uh, converting them into vectors. Those are the rerunk algorithms. And uh, as you can see, they compare documents directly and there's no this, uh, there isn't this uh, um, document to vector conversion step, and there's no information loss. And uh, since there's no information loss, they are often more accurate. Um, uh, the, the results are often more accurate, but it does come with uh, some uh, cost. Like those algorithms are often more computational heavy, and uh, uh, they are significantly slower. A common technique that we use to uh, improve this is to do a two-stage uh, retrieval. Uh, in this, um, this two-stage retrieval, uh, the user issues a query to vector database, and vector database returns you a list of uh, documents. And then we run those rerun algorithms on, on those uh, return value, so that to make sure the most relevant argument, uh, documents are on the top of your search list. This technique is very, uh, uh, is very uh, useful, uh, practical and useful in building, a, uh, in improving a RAG applications. We all know that uh, in a RAG application, we issue a query to, uh, to Pinecone to get a bunch of uh, documents as the context. And then we set the context along with the original question to LLM. And the actual work that the LLM does is to summarize uh, summarize the context as the answer to the question. 
if you just pass all the search results to LM, it is possible that um, the useful in some information is lost in the middle because LM, uh, they are not really good at picking the right information from a big context. On the other hand, if we give a smaller win uh, context window, then it is possible that the really useful document is outside of your context. Then LLM won't be able to answer the, uh, the question correctly. If we apply a uh, rerank, in this case, all the, doc all the relevant documents will be on the top of the list. And in that case, we can both reduce the size of context and also uh, make sure that uh, we pass the good uh, context to LLM so that uh, it is able to uh, answer the question uh, much better. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to hand over to my uh, co-founder, Yichen, and uh, she will talk, uh, 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 do a quick introduction about uh, what is Flick and uh, how Flick ha can help in building uh, uh, two-stage retrieval systems. All right, Yichen. Thank you. Um, before we jump into the hands-on part, I saw someone uh, raise a question on like whether it is necessary to have uh, all the pinecone back knowledge. So I'm just gonna do a quick uh, poll here. Um, if anyone like has a, can you stop sharing screen? Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, has uh, does everyone here today like has uh built their pinecone index before? Uh, so we will know like. What what to do include in our walkthrough? If you have, can you uh, raise your hand, or should I the other ask the the other way? Like, if anyone here has not never created a Pinecone index, please please raise your hand. <laughs> Let, let's go with the first one. If you have created an index, before, <laughs> raise your hand. Started working on it. Okay, nice. <laughs> Looks like about a dozen people or so. Okay, nice. Um, got it. So yeah, um, about Fleek. Uh, Fleek is a serverless API builder. Uh, we're here today to uh, showcase the Pinecone's uh, capability of uh, both how to use Fleek to write a uh, index into Pinecone really fast. And uh, you can also build a, a re-rank APIs and a semantic search, like just both described uh, using a very simple interface uh, where you can also get all the features that you want to uh, use uh, with uh, Pinecone's uh, data ingestion and uh, re-rank and embedding APIs. Um, What's unique about Fleek is whether you're transforming data or calling LMs or uh, getting embeddings, uh, we can serve you right out of the, out of the box. Sorry, you uh, mentioned, uh, yes. did you intend to share your screen? Um, yeah, I think Bo uh, drifted from the slide. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Instead. Yeah, so on the right side, this is our interface. We're going to use it to build uh, today's uh, workshop uh, tutorial. Um, Fleek's API is uh, serverless. That means there's no need to uh, set up infrastructure. And our endpoints are production ready. It can scale up and scale down automatically uh, without the user uh, doing anything. Um, so whether you want to write data into your third-party database like Pinecone and Snowflake, uh, or you just want to generate a back-end uh, API endpoint for your front-end app, uh, you can all use Fleek to uh, build your APIs. And now let's dive right in. <laughs> um, let me share my Fleek interface.
Okay, and everyone see my screen? Yes. Nice. So uh, this is a Flick interface. Um, first, I think based on the tutorial Bo just described, uh, we're going to first uh, learn to ingest data into Pinecone. And I see there's a couple of people here who are still working on creating their first um, Pinecone index. Um, it's very straightforward, uh, I think. We can uh, literally like log in using your uh, cred, cred <laughs> using your Gmail and create your first Pinecone index pretty fast. Uh, let me demo this. Uh, yeah. Can everyone see the Pinecone interface now? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if you're new, you can sign up right here. Uh, and I'm not new, so I sign up right into my uh, Python index. Um, but this is how you create index. You just click create and name your index. Um, one thing I would uh, highlight, uh, and many people will run into a little trouble, is like please make sure your uh, index dimension uh, matches with the model of embedding you're choosing. Um, for today, um, Pinecone's embedding model is uh, 1024 dimensions. I think that's the only thing we need to pay attention to when you create a Pinecone index. Okay, any questions uh, for Corey here? Okay, nice. Doesn't look like it, great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so yeah, today uh, we're going to use this um, Pinecone index, uh, which you can see, I'm gonna create a test environment um, and you can see this. There's no uh, vectors in it. Now we're going to start writing vectors into this uh, particular index. Uh, now back to the Flick interface. First, we're going to create a new workflow. We're going to name it Pinecone Data Ingestion. Update the name. First, we're going to use some uh, data sample to uh, test our logic. And this is an HTTP data input, uh, meaning uh, we're building an API. And this is a sample payload uh, we can use later to uh, ping this API to ingest data. Uh, here we're copy pasting uh, electronic catalog uh, item here uh, with all the fields. Uh, if you're more familiar with the tabular data, like you deal with SQL, or uh, Postgres all the time. I think this view will make it easier for you to view the payload. Uh, let me click away this. And the first step is, of course, we want to do a little light cleaning about this data um, because to create a meaningful semantic search, we need a product description. Here, uh, we'll just uh, uh, concatenate the title and the feature fields here. to make a long description of this uh, batteries. Um, okay, click step and you will see the new uh, description field is created uh, on top of the initial payload. And again, you can view it in a tabular view or a JSON view, depending on your mental model. In next step, we're just going to generate embeddings. Here, we are going to select Pinecone as our embedding provider. And we're choosing my own index, uh, but you can always create new index uh, by copy paste your uh, Pinecone API key here. In embedding model, again, Pinecone's embedding model in JSON. So here is the JSON path is a selector. So in this case, we are going to create vectors for the description field. So it's very easy on the right. You can see the description is part of the JSON field. So we only need to uh, use the JSON format and it will auto-complete and tell you this is a description. Um, then because we want to keep all the rest of the fields, uh, we just need to check, uh, attach the vectors to the input event. And I think that's it.
And let's create some embeddings. And you can see here, see here the input from the SQL node now uh, is getting into the embedding node and can collapse the vectors and you will see all the initial fields attached to the uh, inputs. And we now have this uh, embedding vectors created. And the last step, it's very fast, isn't it? Um, is we just want to write this new vector into our pinecone index. Again, we're gonna select the Fleek beta and the index is today we're going to use electronics catalog and the vector fields is this vector we just created uh, using the embedding node. Again, you can use the JSON path searcher and we know the embeddings is inside the embedding object. And let's validate. Yeah, this is the right field. That's only includes embedding. And for the meta field, uh, this is where we, we can keep uh, other fields that's not used to generate vectors. Uh, here we're having a title. And again, JSON pass is dot title. And you can generate as many uh, key fields you want. Price, price. I think the uh, the JSON path for the price should be capitalized P. Oh, yes. Safer just use the selector because it knows better than I do. <laughs> the selector is pretty, pretty slick. <laughs> yeah. No discount for this. What else do we missing? I'm going to uh, you know, the subcategory. Yeah, description. Um, yeah, I think that's good. That should be good. Um, yeah, let's just save this into Pinecone and just click Run Step. Because our sample data only includes uh, one item today. Uh, it says success successfully written into the Pinecone just with one item. But uh, uh, when you're using this API later, uh, after we showed you how to publish this one, you can uh, include, include multiple uh, items when you are ingesting uh, vectors. Now let's check our Pinecone index. So here, um, but... Sorry, uh, I think you need to specify the namespace. Uh, when you are writing, you didn't, uh, I think in your Pinecone sync node, you need to go to the advanced settings and then specify okay. the namespace, yeah. Otherwise, you just roll to the default namespace. Yeah, good point. Because we're testing today, we're going to use a test namespace. Uh, let's run again. Okay. Let's go to our namespace here. Now the test is available. Let's see. Here we go. Now we have this uh, battery item. Uh, with vectors uh, written into Pinecone. And you can find it here. Um, yeah, now go back to, go back to our uh, workflow. Once this workflow is tested and you're happy with the ingestion result, uh, we can publish this into your API endpoint. All you need to do is click publish. And this is the, the ingestion to Pinecone. You may choose between a staging endpoint and a production point. Uh, today, we're going to publish a production point and click Publish. It should only take uh, less than one minute to produce this uh, API endpoint. And this is the endpoint you can copy paste uh, and plug in into your local HTTP API client and just call it like a standard API call. We're going to illustrate this in a terminal for our semantic search workflow. And, but this is literally how, to, how you can digest, ingest data into Pinecone with this API. And the only thing you need to do is replace the API key with a Fleek API key, and you can generate a key right here by clicking on the documentation. So um, any questions so far, any comments um, before we switch to the uh, 
API creation for uh, re-ranking and uh, retrievals. So there, there's a question about using the metadata with and with that re-rank algorithm, but that's what you're about to get into next. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll let that question sit for a little bit, see if it gets answered with your uh, with the rest of the demo. Sounds good. So now we publish our ingestion pipeline and we can go back to the workflow and you can see the ingestion pipeline is published. We are going to create the new workflow, uh, essentially a new API that we can actually do the search and retrieve and re-rank. So we're going to name this workflow called uh, Ancom Retrieval. Update the name. Here again, we need some uh, sample data to uh, create this retrieval process. Uh, we're going to just ask, uh, since the data set today we're using is uh, electronic product catalog, uh, we're just asking some question about uh, cameras or TVs. Uh, comment in the QA section if you want to ask other questions. <laughs> we'll see if it works. <laughs> we can switch the questions um, based on the uh, audience uh, suggestions. And as uh, you may know, some of you here probably uh, work with RAG a lot, uh, but we're just going to repeat uh, similar steps uh, when you are actually creating RAG, but here we're doing retrieval only. The first step is we're going to embed the question uh, here again, uh, because we know the data we ingested using uh, Pinecone API, uh, inference API, we're going to use the same embedding model. Uh, JSON pass, it's very easy. We only have one field here, so it's just a question. Um, then click run step. We generate embedding. The embedding is here. We're happy. Uh, the next step is to introduce the Pinecone uh, knowledge search. Again, choose the connections you already created in Pinecone and choose today's index, electronics catalog. Uh, the vector pass here is the question. Oh, actually not the question, yeah, the vector. Again, we are going to use the JSON selector because it's smarter than me. <laughs> um, here, number of top results, uh, let's do 10 to begin with. See if we can retrieve something that's relevant to the question we ask. Okay, this is a very massive JSON. Uh, good thing is you can always switch to the uh, tabular view. Uh, we haven't cleaned it up, uh, but you can see we retrieve some uh, relevant uh, camera information. So here I'm going to introduce, uh, actually this is our very uh, own innovation, is a very easy SQL uh, node that runs directly into your payload. So here we're going to introduce some uh, JSON selectors in SQL. If you're not familiar with this uh, SQL syntax, it's uh, similar as all other JSON selectors that's used in SQL syntax. Uh, you can uh, just refer to the field name. Uh, if it's nested, you just use multiple layers down to uh, refer to the JSON uh, data you just created. And run this JSON element parser. Now we can uh, clean this data up and you will see all the top 10 uh, retrieved results here with uh, the pricing field and title. And that is the basic first step retrieval and we're done with the first step. Okay, and it's produced reasonable results. Uh, some of them uh, uh, relevant and some of us like go into the indoor outdoor space. Uh, we can change into other questions. Do we have any other questions for this first step retrieval? Um, as Bo mentioned, um, the first step retrieval is literally like embedding the questions and we do some keyword matching. Uh, since we mentioned the cameras in our questions, all the retrieval results gonna be uh, camera relevant. In most cases, it will work fine. Uh, you can do uh, any kind of other questions. Uh, uh, what's the... I know there are a number of, of drones uh, with cameras listed in the output. 
Mm-hmm. What, what if you were to ask, what, what's a good flying camera? What's a good it's flying camera? Like this? No, flying, like flying. Flying camera? No, flying, like flying through the air. Oh. Let's see. I think kind of gets it. What do you think? It's still got a few of the indoor outdoor security camera, probably not that accurate. Oh. Flying camera. Yeah. Now we can play around with our advanced free rank API. Um since we're doing cameras, uh, let's do, uh, um, don't like drones. Let's say, wait, what's a camera? Camera to bring for my ski trip. Sorry, it's still summer, but I'm already <laughs> missing the ski trip. Already, already thinking ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So let's not just run the re-rank on the first retrieval without re-rank. Okay. We have, they really like the uh, security camera, seems like. Uh, Wise is another security camera, uh, as I remembered. Um, yeah. That's now let's try re-rank result. Uh, re-rank result, carry strings, truck. That's a question we want to optimize our uh, priority sorting list on top. Um, we can expand the result to 50, and we're going to only get the top uh, rank result, top 10. Yeah, uh, just to add here, uh, this uh, 50 is the top results returned from Pinecon. And this 10 is the top result return from the second stage uh, re-rank algorithm. So we first get 50 oh. documents from uh, Pinecore, and then we pick the top 10 uh, most relevant uh, algorithms, uh, 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 documents from uh, from that uh, re-rank algorithm. Yeah. So we are doing basic two-step retrieval uh, with uh, one call uh, here. And I think you need to specify the rank field to be a uh, description. Oh, yes. Description is, again, we need to remind folks, uh, description is where we save the metadata and here. So the re-rank knows to look at the metadata fields to do the re-rank. Let's try again. Result. Here we go. Now all the top three recommendations are becoming outdoor cameras. Uh, let's know all the surveillance ones has a lower ranking uh, based on these uh, two-step retrieval. Um, we can try another example. Um, this is an interesting one. I think it's mostly forgetful. So game designers. That's we unselect the re-rank result and only using the first step retrieval. As you can see, all the top ones are heavy gamer <laughs> laptops as expected, I would say, because we're using a keyword without a re-rank. Now, if we introduce the re-rank uh, results and same way, we only do top 10 and we're on again. Here, now the Mac family got more uh, attention on top and uh, most designers do use uh, 3D uh, softwares that supported only by Mac. Uh, so I think it's a rerun is smart enough to know that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the test phase. So once we are happy with this uh, re-rank uh, node, uh, you can see it's literally just four steps. Uh, we can generate an API endpoint 
In this case, we want it to be uh, plugged into our application layer, do the um, uh, customer queries uh, in real time. So we're going to choose the synchronized uh, HTTP response as, as the output. And again, publish this API. Product recommendation. Yeah. Do production this time. Hit publish. Okay, now we have this um, API call here. I'm going to copy paste this curl and use my terminal. I might need to switch to my terminal view. Can everyone see my terminal? Yep. Okay. So let me add my own API key. Just can switch the questions. Let me hit. And this API end endpoint is now working. And whenever you switch to different questions, uh, it will provide you the product recommendation uh, based on the questions. So as you can see, if you're building a chatbot or uh, embedding this uh, product recommendation into your uh, existing web apps or e-commerce, uh, this should just work the same. Uh, and it's just a single a API call to gen generate the, the query embeddings Run the query, yeah. run run the re-rank, get yeah. back to our results, just a single API. That's that that's awesome. Yeah. Computer. Yeah, you can throw in any questions and it should just work out of the box. Um let me pause here to see if anyone has any questions either about re-rank or about uh, Pinecone's uh, two-step retrievals. So, uh, or, uh, John, I'm going to click on answer live to answer your question. The, does this demonstration answer the question you had about using metadata with and without the re-rank algorithm? Well, John, if that didn't answer your question, please ask it. Ask it again. Um, are, are there any other questions for anybody? I, I yeah. Have a... uh, I see. Uh, Philip is asking the question. Uh, what does a dollar dot chunk contain? This is the JSON path that we used uh, in Fleet UI. And uh, is the... it text or a number? How does the score change under the hood? Um. Yeah. So if you go to the uh, uh, Pinecone knowledge search uh, node, yeah, uh, maybe you can show the uh, run result again. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna show what's produced by the you go to JSON view. Yeah. So the dollar chunk actually points to here. Yeah. So that is the query stream because rerun algorithms, uh, it takes two parameters uh, uh well actually uh, there are multiple parameters but uh, one uh uh one important parameter is the query stream which is uh your original query that is uh, uh the value of this uh chunk field and uh, it uses this query to compare against a bunch of documents and uh, what is the document we are using here it is the description field in the uh for uh, results. Um, actually, uh, Yishan, can you go back to the our UI? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can run the Pinecone query step. Maybe you just run the entire pipeline. Run, run, run the entire, oh, okay. 
So this is so a result. Yeah, so you can see that a uh, pine cone result returns this uh, match list and uh, all the elements in the, inside this match list, if you do not do re-rank, then it's just uh, ranked by uh, pine cone uh, vector similarity scores. And uh, every uh, every element uh, every element in this list has this uh, metadata field and metadata fields contains uh, all these uh, uh, different fields, right? And uh, the document that we are comparing against with this uh, original query is this uh, description field because uh, we have specified uh, this uh, rank field in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, yeah in, in this uh, pine cone query node. And, uh, yeah, so so a dollar dot chunk uh, refers uh, points to the original query, and the rank field description points to the field name in the in the uh, metadata list. Um. Uh. uh sorry. In, in a uh. Uh, metadata field of the match list. And then we use, we, we take this value and uh, com we compare the original query with the description and calculate a different score and use that score to rerun the, uh, the, the match list. Um, let me know if I answer it, uh, uh, I made it uh, clear or uh, do you need any uh, more uh, uh, explanation? Can we tweak the way we ranking works? Corey, do you want to add some inputs on that? So today we're using, there's a uh, different re-ranking algorithms. Um, but yes, the, if you're fixing using uh, pine cones re rank APIs, you can change different uh, optimization meta fields. Uh, say you, you don't want to optim optimize based on description, you have a better field to want to optimize on, then you can choose a different meta workflow. And uh, outside this uh, context, I think you can use, uh, I think Cohere also has a re-rank API. And I know some specific e-commerce uh, providers write their own re-rank. Uh, so it, as long as you know what the uh, relevance uh, optimization metrics uh, you want to achieve, uh, you can write your own uh, re-rank algorithms as well. So there's another question. Uh, how would you guys compare the comprehensiveness of the rag response using GraphDB to your uh, baseline rag class re-ranking? Or are they used in different contextual query scenario than the scraper data set? Well, it's a, uh, how, how, how to answer this? Like GraphDB is just a database and uh, like it it provides you a core interface for you to retrieve some documents but are those documents uh relevant it all depends on how you write the query to your graph db they are not using machine learning algorithms well graph db like uh, underneath the hood they they can be um it's not a most of graph dbs are not like a, using machine learning algorithms it's more like a rule based and like a other um rdbms it's just a, like a uh, like you are writing SQL and uh, it depends on uh, the, the, the the retrieval quality really depends on your SQL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I would add to that, that you know, if, if you're, depending on what your source data is, if it's uh, unstructured data, which is most data in the world, then a, a vector similarity search is going to work uh, much more effectively than a, a graph, not a knowledge graph search. Knowledge graph search is great if you have very structured data with very clear relationships from objects to objects. But if you don't have that, uh, for instance, the, the source data that um, Yishun was using today was completely unstructured. Um, you know, one, one camera didn't necessarily have a relationship to another camera, right? Just just based on the, it was just based on the similarity. So that that's where vector search really shines. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Felipe's got a, another question. Uh, said that previous answer was made things more clear, and also asks. How does the speed of the search increase uh, if you increase the top K and what to tell what's a good top K? How to tell what's a good score? So there's actually a lot of questions there. So the, the latency on a search is only slightly related to the total top K. Uh, now, typically we see top Ks of 10, 50, 100. You could have a top K of 1,000, uh, which that would increase your read latency, but not necessarily because of the size of the, the query. It's because 
under the hood in Pinecone, when you have a larger top K, you're actually looking at a larger uh, amount of the raw corpus. So you're going to be doing a, essentially a larger table scan, which can slow things down. Even then, we're, we're talking about dozens of milliseconds, not hundreds or, or thousands of milliseconds. Uh, we, we, as far as what's a good top K, it really depends on what your application is. If you have a recommendation engine where you just want to show, you know, a hundred items, then you're probably going to use a top K of a hundred or, or less. Um, if it's something where you need to get a lot of context uh, to make sure that when you do do the re-ranking, you get the most salient uh, information back to feed to your LLM or, or other other model, you might go with a larger top K. But as I said, we generally see top Ks of 10, 50, 100. It's rare to have a top K larger than that. As for what, what how, what's a good score, that is also very application dependent. Uh, if you have a uh, recognition engine, you want to have a very high uh, uh, relevancy score. If you're looking for outliers, though, then a low relevancy is actually better because it, it highlights that the query you're checking with, that vector, is an outlier. It doesn't match your known uh, known examples. So the definition of a good score is, is very subjective. Okay, I think Philip has a quick uh, follow-up question. Uh, does it grow linear or exponent exponential? Um, I so, Felipe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're asking if the latency grows linearly based on the increase in the top K and not necessarily. It's it's hard to predict exact. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, he, he said yes, that, that is what he's asking. So it's hard to predict exactly uh, because as I said, it has a lot more to do with the underlying corpus. If you have a million vectors and you have a top K of 100 versus top K of 1,000, it's not going to make a big difference. If you have a billion vectors and you have a top K of 100 versus a top K of 1,000, that could make a larger difference. Uh, it also depends on you know, how often you're, you're running queries that are like the one you just ran. Uh, if there's a lot of very unique queries that are being run, uh, it might not be hitting the, the cache as often. So there, there's a lot of considerations that can go into that. Um, but generally speaking, the larger top K will have a latency impact, but it tends to be pretty small in the scheme of things. Yeah, and in practice, what we find very useful is uh, you either can, like, uh, based on the top level uh, segmentation, you store your data more smartly. Uh, so each index uh, size will be much smaller to search. And or uh, you can add in a, a namespace or a metadata fields to make more precise selections uh, on top of your uh, vector matching. And all these techniques can be very helpful for you to uh, accelerate latency. Excellent points, Yichun. Uh, Stephen asks, can you have multiple fields stored as vectors for this example? Uh, the description, the title, or maybe if we had a technical stats field and further example use like description. I'm not sure I'm following the question. Um, Stephen, could you follow up with uh, another question clarifying what you mean by multiple field stores as, stored as vector? Are, are you asking during the, in the fleet pipeline, when you're creating the, the embedding from the raw data, if you can choose multiple fields to, to create the embedding or do you need to concatenate them? I, yeah, I, uh, that, I think, I, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Bo. I think at least for Pinecone, uh, when we write Pinecone, we only like uh, write one vector at a time, right? And then right. if you have a document, you need to generate a vector from this uh, document. This document may have multiple fields and you need to either choose one field to generate a vector or you, you, you need to first do some manipulation and uh, like make sure uh, you, you do some like uh, generate a new field and you set a new field to, uh, to generate the vector. And then when you save, you save the vector alongside the metadata and the inside metadata, you can like store lots of different fields. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope and that answers. But, but yeah, that, that's that's 100% correct, is that you're, you're only generating vectors for one field. So if you have multiple fields that you want to go into that vec that uh, embedding creation, you're going to concatenate them together first as part of the, the uh, data clean yeah. before you actually send it to the, uh, the embedding. Or, 
or if you like, uh, if you want to generate a vector for multiple fields, then you need to store like a multiple vectors, like the same document. Right. Uh, you generate exactly. multiple vectors, then you yeah you store multiple vectors. So yeah. I think yeah. Stephen's second part of uh, question is I think that's a common one. It's like after so instead of using the re rank API, if uh, I think that's my understanding, instead of using the re rank API to rank based on the unstructured field and they have uh, some statistical field as saved as metadata. Uh, and can can you like, uh, can we uh, re-rank the result based on the uh, statistic field instead of uh, uh, text uh, embeddings? I think that's totally fine. Uh, I think what what was usually retrievable is you after you retrieve, let's say top, uh, top 50 or top 20, and uh, you also gain the metadata of relevant to these uh, top K vectors, then you can uh, easily uh, add a sorting order. In Flick's case, uh, this is doable. Just using the SQL node, you just say uh, sort by uh, field X. Uh, if that field is uh, numeric or uh, numbers, uh, you can do descending or ascending. But if your statistical stats uh, field is more complex, then uh, you probably get the results and uh, uh, rank it the way you want to rank it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, that kind of answers your question. Again, metadata is something that uh, comes, uh, comes with the retrieval. So you can decide to do something about it, or you can use a re-rank field to say, oh, I'm just going to do another round of algorithm matching on the uh, text field. Right. And, and also, depending on what these stats are, if it's just a, a single number, and you're looking for ones that are close to, to each other, metadata filtering might be a, a, another way to go about getting that. If you're looking for stats within a certain bound, you know, greater than, less than. So pretty vector for stats. I think that's flashed out. Um, cool. That's the latest one. So sure. I think that was that was the last one. And Stephen, oh, we have okay. another one. Yeah. Okay. The... Excellent. Good deal, Stephen. That's why we do these, right? Because this is all new for a lot of people, and it can be a little overwhelming at times. So we want to spend the time to. Uh, educate our customers with the Pinecone and Fleek. Make sure that you have all the tools you need to be successful. Okay, okay uh, thank you. Uh, there's another, yeah. yeah I mean, courses based on their input. They also have completion rate. How many students have finished the course of percentage? Okay. Enrollment rate. How many students have enrolled? Review score from one to five. Release date. And this course released. Okay. We want to re-rank the courses based on completion rate, enrollment rate, review score, and release date. Obviously, we want to recommend the courses with the highest completion rate, enrollment rate, and review score. We also want to recommend the courses that have been re released recently. Interesting. OK. Um, looks like in your case, you, are, you already have the rule to order your result, right? Um, in that case, probably you just uh, fetch the query result and then like apply this rule on your side because rerank, th this rerank algorithm that we introduced today is more like uh, doing a semantic uh, reranking. Like uh, if it's a natural language and structured data, then we are able to rerank them. But uh, if you already have uh, your courses, like all those attributes, uh, there, then you can simply write some script to rerun them based on your rule. Yeah, I think it's that, it's, uh, yeah, it's important yeah. to clarify that that re-rank is not an order by clause, right? It it's not a way to say okay, you know, rank these based on this field. It's it's ranking them based on their similarity to the original question. So that that's what a re-ranker does. Uh, so Jose, what you're asking for is that kind of business logic would go into the application itself where you would um, filter and sort based on those metadata filters. Vikram just says, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. All right. All right, well, we're about 10 minutes ahead uh, so if anybody has any more questions, we have plenty of time to answer them. Uh, and if not, we could wrap things up early and give people 10 minutes back to their day. Let's let's give people a, a minute or two to 
either raise hands or ask questions. Make sure that everybody gets all the uh, answers that they're looking for. Okay, I think, right. I think that's gonna do it then. Bo Eijin, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for walking us through. Thank you, Corey. It really is an amazing product and I'm looking forward to using it in my own application work as well. Thank you, thank, thank you, you. thanks. Uh, oh, and also thank you, uh, you. Pankle. Yeah, yeah. Right. thank you, Pankle, thank us. you, yeah. Corey. If anyone wants to play around with today's demo and um, just writing data into um, Pankle in a very easy way, just sign up your free account on fleet.ai. Uh, we look forward to see you. All right. Okay. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.